Welcome back to Stocks to Watch as we dive into intelligent bio solutions, leveraging the power of medical technology to develop transformative, accurate solutions that improve quality of life. Trading on the NASDAQ under INBS, we have the privilege to be joined by Dr. Daniel Brown, Head of Clinical Affairs, and Dr. Paul Wilson, Head of Special Projects. First and foremost, welcome, gentlemen. Thanks, Kyle. Great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, such a pleasure to get both of you on. So firstly, Paul, do you want to kind of give us a brief history of the intelligent fingerprinting technology? When was it developed and how has it kind of evolved? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. So the technology was first developed in 2007. That original technology was taking a fingerprint on a glass slide and trying to visually stain the fingerprint to identify the presence of drugs. When I joined the company in 2013, we were still working on that technology, but we were not able to make it successful with a larger population size. So we then moved on to using the idea of fingerprints, but with lateral flow technology, which is well established for use in medical diagnostics and point of care settings. And yeah, having proved that that worked, we then launched the sort of current range of products within Europe and the UK and now trying to expand that range of products globally. Yeah, can you take us a little bit deeper, maybe about the science behind the technology? How exactly does it work? It's based on lateral flow technology, which is the same family of technology that includes pregnancy tests and, and COVID tests. The specific lateral flow that we use in the intelligent fingerprinting technology is fluorescence based. So you, unlike those others that I mentioned, you can't read it out visually by eye, you have to have a reader which gives you an unambiguous readout, not open to interpretation or, you know, squinting at a test to see is there a line or not. You just get a clear negative or non-negative output on the screen. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, pass it over to Daniel here. How does sweat testing compare to other methods such as urine and saliva? That's a good question, Kyle. And the answer might come in two key categories. One, of course, is related to the acquisition of the specimen. With urine testing, if you're gonna do that in a workplace, of course, you have to have same gender specimen collectors, you have to have the plumbing facilities, a restroom, that kind of setup to take care of that. Or with oral fluid, there are also you know, biohazard considerations with the saliva sample. But with sweat testing, you're just collecting the fingerprint sweat by pressing down on the cartridge. Then on the back end of that, when you consider the physiological aspects and what the data provide with fingerprint sweat testing, the uh, answer reflects drug use within the past 16 to 24 hours. Now that's similar to oral fluid, uh, but a urine specimen reflects on drug use over the past days or even up to a couple weeks. And then some of your audience might be familiar with hair testing, which of course reflects drug use over the past several months. So hair testing and urine testing are more indicative of lifestyle than they are the work day. And for a lot of employers that are interested in safety, or for example, if there were an accident and there's post-accident test requirements, then you, you get an answer that shows what is going on in the subject's body at that moment. Yeah, and maybe diving a bit deeper into kind of strengthening your competitive moat, Paul, when it kind of comes to your IP on that portfolio, can you talk about and just elaborate a bit more on protecting that technology? Yeah, we actually have uh, um, IP, which covers the full range of products that we have. So that includes protections on the lateral flow test strip that is inside the test cartridges that we have. The cartridge molding and design itself is patented. There's a patent on the, on the fluorescence reader. We have a patent on the design of our confirmation cartridge, which is the secondary cartridge we use to confirm the screening test result in that that gets sent back to the lab. And we also have patents on supporting technologies and other ideas we have for future products that we're not currently implementing, but they're part of our wider uh, portfolio. Yeah, I appreciate the insight there. And Daniel, I mean, you were recently in Canada performing clinical studies for the company's FDA 510K submission. Maybe tell us more about this. What studies were you undertaking and why were they important for your application? 
we worked with Cleantha Research, a, a very well-known uh, clinical research firm in Toronto, Canada. We conducted a pharmacokinetic study or PK study that was very important for our FDA application because this is a whole new sample type for the FDA, human fingerprint sweat. There are not any clear devices that utilize human fingerprint sweat. In fact, there are not any cleared assays. There are some specimen collection devices that are for, for sweat that are cleared by the FDA, but not the entire method. And working with Cleantha research on this PK study was very important to demonstrate the clinical utility of human fingerprint sweat for measuring exposure to recent drug use. Yeah. And do you want to expand a little bit more on what the general findings of these studies were? That study showed that there are parameters that people, scientists, pharmacokinetic area and pharmacology area use to describe the absorption, the metabolism, the distribution, the elimination of drugs. And, and these are very similar. And they're cal we calculated them for opiates or specifically for codeine in this study. And what it demonstrated was that the pattern of excretion in fingerprint sweat of codeine was the same as the pattern for whole blood and for oral fluid. So you could use a human fingerprint test just like you would do those other types of tests. Now, the PK study data sounds promising. Can you share some of the key insights from this study and how they contribute to the overall validation of the technology itself? Sure. The one parameter that, that is, is important in these types of studies is the what's called the Tmax or the time to maximum concentration. So if somebody ingests codeine orally, it, then it's rise in the system and time to reach the peak is is the same across those three different matrix and and using statistical analyses we could compare these uh, between blood and oral fluid and human fingerprint sweat and they, and they were the same similarly on the back end and and each time there were three different dosages that were given to the subjects in this clinical trial and each time we would see a rise of codeine in the fingerprint sweat, just as in blood or oral fluid. And then on the back end, there's also another computation called the half-life, the time it takes for the drug to decrease by 50%. And those parameters were the same too. So, that, so this solidifies our claim that you can use human fingerprint sweat, just as you would use oral fluid or blood testing to measure exposure to, to in this case, coding. Well, on that note, I definitely appreciate you guys taking the time today as we pass it off to the viewer. We'd love to know what you think in that comment section and consider subscribing. If you want to learn more, we'll leave the links for Intelligent Biosolutions trading on the NASDAQ under INBS in the description below. But on that, as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.